Now then, let's turn our attention to something that uh, affects all of us, at least the right across the continent, the almighty dollar, as some refer to it. Its appreciation may represent the US economy's biggest speed bump this year. And that could be a good or bad thing, depending on whether or not the president-elect does follow through on measures aimed at accelerating growth. The Bloomberg dollar spot index has risen by 5.7% of it since the November 8th election. This is largely based on expectations of a couple of things, lower taxes, higher government spending, and looser or much less government regulations under President Trump. A strengthening dollar will help the Fed keep the economy from overheating by dampening exports and inflation if Trump does deliver on his growth-boosting agenda. But if this Trump bump, so to speak, doesn't quite happen or it takes longer to realize, the dollar's appreciation could prove to be premature and quite problematic. Let's dig deep into the details of exactly what we should expect uh, from uh, the U.S. William Denslow joins me now live from New York with more data on this story. Um, William, given the president-elect's propensity to lie, as he did with claims about voter fraud, for example, and to flip-flop on positions over the years on things like climate change, for example, why are investors so bullish about a fiscal stimulus coming from his administration? Well, I think the first thing to look at really is infrastructure. As you mentioned, this has a huge benefit for a great raft of companies on Wall Street, especially when it comes to construction. Uh, the likes of Caterpillar seen big bumps since the U.S. elections. Also, as you mentioned, these proposed cuts not only for businesses, but for individuals as well. That helping, that helping to give the market somewhat of a boost since the elections as well. And also, some of his proposed government picks also easing sentiment on Wall Street, the likes of Steven Mnuchin as Treasury Secretary, the likes of Wilbur Ross as Commerce Secretary, both lots of experience on Wall Street. Mnuchin, of course, previously with Goldman Sachs, that really helping to ease feelings on Wall Street. But of course, let's not forget what the state of the economy in the United States is at the moment. Of course, just last week, we saw consumer confidence at 15 year highs, uh, at the unemployment rate down below 5% in the United States. Just today, great uh, construction spending, uh, construction data as well. So that, so some of Trump's policies being coupled with economic growth in the United States really coming together. And that's why we're seeing the Dow Jones push towards that milestone 20,000 figure. Indeed. Um, you've mentioned infrastructure spending, but just for context, walk us through the, the other highlights of this fiscal spending plans that the president-elect will work on, or rather have to implement, after the 20th of January. Absolutely. Now, let's look at infrastructure. Of course, such a key part of his push to winning the U.S. elections. Now, it's been estimated he plans to spend around $550 billion when it comes to infrastructure. He's spoken repeatedly about crumbling roads, bridges, uh, ports in the United States. So this certainly is a key part of his policy. Also areas, other areas as well in terms of spending. The military, of course, we've seen, uh, we've seen plenty of news in recent weeks about his proposals to, uh, to boost military spending, to boost the US nuclear arsenal even potentially. Uh, things like spending on veterans as well, of course, not forgetting his pledges to tackle the inner cities in the United States. But there is one key point. He still needs to get all these policies through Congress, and even though they, even though both houses might be under Republican control, many in those two houses will be unhappy about his plans to potentially increase the national debt. So he still does have some challenges, even though the Republicans hold all three cards, as it were, in the United States. Indeed. A stronger dollar, though, that does make U.S. exports a lot more expensive uh, for export markets around the world, from Asia to Europe, even to Africa, you name it. Doesn't that fundamentally undermine one of the core claims uh, that the president-elect made in his election? That is namely to bring jobs back into the United States. How is he going to do that when it's so expensive for other people around the world to actually buy said American products? Well, that's a major reason that lots of economists uh, we've spoken to have real gripes with. Now, from the Trump administration, one simple solution to that is these promised tax cuts, uh, tax cuts and, and fiscal incentives for these companies to come from overseas back to the United States, thus bringing jobs back. But you mentioned things like the implications the strong dollar has, of course. Um, many analysts, many economists say that having a strong U.S. dollar 
uh, is really incredibly detrimental for emerging markets, especially these same emerging markets where places like the auto industry for the United States see their real business expanding. Economists say the United States is already a saturated market. The most area for growth are going to be in these regions. So there is certainly an area of concern. But Donald Trump, his policy all along, he's going to rene renegotiate these trade deals that he's promised, the likes of NAFTA, um, revamping some kind of a TPP type deal, really. Um, Taking them to the taking them to the shredders, coming up with his own new policies, and that is how he thinks that he can really help boost business and maintain these jobs, even if things like a strong dollar and less trade do ultimately come about under his administration. Indeed, one last question for you, William. Um, earlier today, the president-elect threatening General Motors with a, a border tax, to, uh, to use what he said in his tweet, accusing the firm effectively of sending vehicles made in Mexico across the border, tax-free in his words. Uh, he's done this with other companies as well, Boeing on the contract for Air Force One, uh, Lockheed Martin on the F-35 program. In aggregate, let's, just, let's, let's ignore that for a moment, but in aggregate, if it does compel these companies to bring manufacturing back into the United States, are American taxpayers, American consumers willing to swallow the higher costs that come with domestic manufacturing? I suppose that all really remains to be seen. Of course, one thing under in his push to reach the White House was he pledged to bring jobs back to the United States. Jobs, jobs, jobs. That was front and center of his administration. So that's the thing that really resonated with the American people. So if this issue, of course, is being drummed in, in the back from many analysts, many economists we've spoken to in New York over the last few months saying that this could have real implications. But of course, his, his plan is to bring these jobs first and to really go from there. And according to many we've spoken to, there's serious concern that even if these jobs do come back to the United States, the United States simply won't be able to reverse their economy back 30, 40 years when some of these jobs were the last time in on in and on U.S. soil. So certainly concerns about these higher prices, of course. There's just a difficulty to compete. But again, Donald Trump says with these new trade negotiations, they're still incredibly up in the air, then these things will be mitigated. But for many analysts on Wall Street who are still thinking that there's this rally that we're seeing on Wall Street could certainly be somewhat of a bubble. There is certainly a great deal of anticipation and still plenty of jitters even before Donald Trump reaches the White House in a, just a few days' time. Indeed. We'll leave it there for the time being. Thank you for that. That's William Denslow live in New York. Should be interesting to see exactly what short positions are being taken on U.S. equities right now.